Welcome to EFT Nation, your home for all things tapping. For show notes and resources, please visit EFTTappingTraining.com. We are your tapping hosts. I'm Alina Frank. And I'm Craig Wiener. The information provided in this podcast is not a substitute for counseling or medical advice. The information presented here is meant to inspire and educate listeners, but are not guarantees of any kind. Okay, so we got a we got a meaty topic today. Money, money, money. Yes, we're talking about the money podcast issue. Yeah, yeah. A money or um lack of lack of right feeling like there's not enough. Feeling like there's not enough. Tappable issue. Absolutely. Definitely. So let's have let's go through some guidelines. So we're you know just kind of things, areas that you can explore when you're tapping around this, because I think a lot of people get confused on what to actually tap on. Okay, so we'll give some guidance and yeah. some hows, and how does how does somebody even know where to start, right? All their feelings, like, I don't have enough of that. My right. life is not representing abundance and flow in the money, and I have more than I need, and, and so most people are not there, and they're on some level of I need more than what I have. And what I have right now mm-hmm. is definitely not enough. Right, right. Where do, you, where do you start with that? Right. Well, you start where you're at. I mean, we're, we're big believers in like starting exactly where you're at on it. And one of the ways to work on it is to work on how you feel about where your current money, money situation. Okay. I hate it. Even though I, even though I hate my money situation. Well, wait, you know, our big motto is to get specific. So what do you mean by that, Craig? Um, I feel like, um, oh, I'm worried um, what amount will be in my account around the first of the month when mortgages do, because, you know, we're independent practitioners and, you know, I'm just... Um, This isn't true for me, but I'm just making it up. In other words, one, a lot of people feel the stress of the rent, the stress of the mortgage coming at the end of the month and is the money going to be there to pay the bills, right? So I want you to think about you. Where would you, where would you be sitting down to look at payments or accounts? Yeah. Okay. So I can just imagine that I'm sitting at my desk because I got like a stack where I keep my bills and looking at that and maybe it's the 31st and going, ah, looking at my checking account. Okay. Can't pay that. Gonna have to push that back and check back in a few days. Great. And how does that make you feel thinking about oh, that? Oh my God, that feels awful. It's an awful feeling. It okay. feels like a failure. Great. Zero to 10 on the feeling awful. Yeah. Feeling awful. Nine and a half. Where do you feel in your body? If anywhere? Oh, it's like this bottomless pit in my stomach. Great. Now we have all the elements to do a successful setup statement and reminder phrase on this particular aspect of the big global part piece of um, my money situation, I'm worried about it, um, the, 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 the paying, paying of the mortgage and all of that. I've got a concrete example of that. And once you get going, other things will pop into your mind that are connected. That's the Yeah, the I could easily see the brain going to, okay, there's another bill, and there's another something that I want to have, but I can't have because there's not enough right now. Right. But, and, and the juiciest part is when you start remembering things in your past that make this so. Mm-hmm. Sure. So like the, other times yeah. when, you know, when I had to actually miss a payment, maybe. Yeah. Or right? bounce a check with a, with a, with a mortgage company or mm-hmm. with a, a, the, the leasing company. Oh, and then yeah. the late fees and all, sure. and the late fees yeah all of, all of that so you know i could be working i when i was working with uh with clients and um i'm just thinking of one in particular that it was uh, it was around this this situation and the hairball of like paying bills and all of that and we found in actual memory uh when uh she was about eight years old having to be the one to to um go out and talk to creditors when they knocked on the door. Wow. Yeah. Eight years old? Yeah. Parents couldn't deal with it. And they sent this cute eight year old because they thought that would work. So mm-hmm. you can imagine what that would set up for I, them. Yeah. And I can imagine that money issues can be like, can feel like a, like a forest. There's so many examples in a person's life of when there wasn't enough or they faced a challenge or were embarrassed because they bounce the check, you know, just all those situations as far as lacking sufficient money. Well, that's that, a good is, place to, if you really want to work on this and you really are, are, are concentrating on turning it around, I suggest absolutely writing down that past money history. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you know, we do an exercise in, uh, 
in the money mastery wor workshop that we do where it's um, money represented as, as a river. Mm -hmm. And so uh, knowing those specific times when that river was just a trickle or it had boulders uh, in the way where it was dammed up when, and, and, and it's just finding those events where that happened can absolutely influence what you're able to make now. Do you have to tap on every single time that you felt in order to really shift this or change this? Do you have to tap on every single like no. feeling like a failure no, experience? No, no, this is the misconception. There's, there's something called the generalization effect that takes place, which is you don't have to necessarily tap on every event um, related to this in order to start seeing shifts pretty quickly in your reality. Yeah, there's actually an, an EFT languaging discourse. We talk about a tabletop, mm -hmm, yeah. right? The tabletop is like my challenging issue with not having enough money. Right, my money right? issues. Right? right, it's just kind of like this big thing. Yeah. But what holds up that tabletop as being a viable existing problem are those table legs. Mm -hmm. And the table legs, right? They each represent the different experiences or circumstances that I've had that sure. make that to be a problem, that kind of keep that afloat, so to Absolutely. speak. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And you don't have to chop down every single table leg to have the table top come crashing down. Absolutely. Yeah. So, thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So early events around money or wealth or um, things that have to do with material possessions. I mean, things like not getting a Barbie on Christmas. I show, That one showed up for me when I was working on all of these things. <laughs> so um, go back and listen to how to be specific and um, why we focus on the negative um, with EFT in our previous podcast to get the concept here that our natural birthright is to be healthy, abundant, prosperous, in good relationships. And we're just getting all of the gunk out of the way in order for us to actually be live, living into that. Okay. So, so yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. feeling good about your current, here's the thing. You're not gonna go jumping on the roof and screaming, yay, I have, I feel so great about my money situation. That doesn't, that doesn't need to happen in order for you to turn things around. You need it to be more neutral. Getting to a place of looking at your money situation and not being terrified or panicky about it or sad or feeling like a failure or feeling ashamed around it is getting to a place of neutrality and that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And you could take like one experience and can't there be many different emotions that you have about one? I mean, if yeah. I think about, let's just say, you know, we'll just say a, a bounce check or something like that, um, or a missed payment, whatever. And there could be shame. Yep. There could be anger at myself. Right. There could be anger at my parents for not having taught me how to balance yeah. a checkbook. Right. There could be frustration with the company yeah. because they didn't give me that. So any one event, Remember, you could have all these different aspects and all these different emotions and parts just even around one particular event. And the thing that I like is you think, okay, one particular experience, oh my God, I'm going to be here forever. But the power of really thoroughly working all those different parts or aspects of one event is that many of those aspects will kind of globalize to a lot of other situations. So there might have been another one that had nothing to do with a, a bounce check, but that there was also still shame yeah. or also still anger about or right. also still frustration with right. somebody involved. And so they can start to have that spreading effect right. across a wider area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, so working, let's just go through some, some principles of, of working with money and EFT. So the first one is tapping on how you feel about the situation mm -hmm. now. Right. Two is going through your money history and looking at events in your life that, you know, you feel are still bothering you, upsetting, um, have some negative emotions attached to it to get to, to neutralize. Um, so the other thing I, I, I think is really important. So three here on, um, and it, it could even be like the top one is the deserving piece. That is so huge. So the underlying feeling of, I don't deserve to have it I don't, Easy, I deserve good. to get a hundred thousand, but not make <clears throat> 500,000. Okay. I deserve to make 
500,000, but I don't deserve to make a million. So there's I like a deserve a ceiling, a deserving ceiling. Yeah, there must be something I need to do more of, or I can't just make it because I want it and I, um, yeah. Yeah, because I want it, because I have to somehow have earned, earned it, it. Yes. Work, or the key is <laughs> tried or worked hard enough oh my gosh I see that all the time well right? yeah. In clients. We're, yeah we we were very guilty of that and personally yeah for me being like if i was not trying like if it came easy you know that was good but there was really like a lot more satisfaction <laughs> if i worked really hard and then got it and then you have to look at that right. it's like where did that come from? Exactly. So where did those that come from? The idea that you don't deserve. So again, writing that list of events that make you feel like I don't deserve to make more. I don't deserve mm -hmm. to just um, live abundantly and, 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 and attain the things that I want to. Yeah. We talk about those as limiting beliefs. Yeah. Or limiting negative beliefs. Yeah. Right? And you know, where, those come from or from our past experiences and the really the most powerful ones come from childhood because they're like so ingrained in our experiences mm -hmm. that they don't even feel like a belief anymore it's just the way things are it's just the way things are it's like yeah. a fact well you do you do have to work hard to have anything good you can't if you're from this background ever have anything right. good you, so these beliefs become truisms yeah because they're so well evidenced and experienced in our life that they become you know, they're written in stone. Right. All right. So deserving is another one. And uh, another one is the, the, the sphere of, of change factor. Mm, that's a biggie. So if I change, let's say that suddenly I'm making, um, you know, $10 million a year, I'm making $10 million a year. My life is going to change so radically. What are the what's the downside or what of the what of the downside maybe, are you kidding that's amazing who who doesn't want to make 10 million dollars a year are you kidding me will you I mean, still that's have just the same insane. will you still have the same friends will they still like you mm -hmm. will some will some people in your family use you mm -hmm. will they say will your money evaporate because of all the needs that you have it, taking care of other people or as soon as I start thinking about it too, I start thinking about, I start getting scared that I won't handle it well. Right. I could lose I'll it. start to lose it. Yeah. I'll, I'll make 10 million. No problem. But right. then I'll lose it all. Or, and I'm already feeling angry how much the IRS is going to take away from it. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, all exactly. of a sudden, just as I start to tune into the possibility of that much, yes, there's all these like, wow, all these like little cockroaches of thoughts start coming in about that, start <laughs> niggling away at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it, it's, um, it's a, it's the part of the process is to, is to just start where you are and, and, and instead of tapping on the, you know, the positive kind of icing on a pile of, of, of right dung, it's still going to stink. Instead of doing that, you can pause it. What, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you're, you're, you're using a story they don't know. Uh, okay. So it's putting lipstick on a pig is another way of saying it. And it's just to sugarcoat um, what is what what is happening is to is to slap on an affirmation that's not landing. And in EFT, we use positive tapping in a way that the general public really doesn't understand, which is we're tapping to tune you in. So if you can come up with a statement of I make $10 million every year doing work that I love, working um, uh, with a beautiful life, life, work-life balance. Okay. Let's